way. <laughs> Now about uh, oh five o'clock in the, in the uh, uh, evening or in the day. And it's called traffic laws. We work together. This guy's gone past. Fortunately, I have him on video. He doesn't know this. I can uh, isolate the picture, call his boss, and. I don't know. So and so did this. Here's the video. This is a good thing about it. this is this kind of functions as a dash cam. Might be able to go. Oh no, another guy coming too fast. But Let's see. We have an option here. Yes, we do. I had to fix the mirror. It's down a little too hot. It's too, too uh, low. It's aimed a little low. Oh, it's starting to rain. <laughs> Just as I get out here, there's drops of rain coming out. So, we'll see what happens. The clouds were dark. So, I think I'm going to get a little wet. That's okay. Give me a chance to fix the mirror here. Here we go, much better. It seems to be isolated to this one cloud. Anyways, I've been watching, I just came off of watching La LeBron doing some uh, uh, QLARP. If this is the the part of the vlog that's going to stay within uh, in with with the main part of it's our life. The entire vlog, the entire ride vlog, will be its own vlog, so you'll get to see the whole thing. So there's one that's the whole vlog, the whole ride, and then there's another vlog that's just with the main one. Uh, that's uh, just part of the ride. So that's how we work this out. Uh, we're still in transition. It'll probably take a week to transition to the new uh, format, along with the new options and so on and so forth. So. We are working on it. It's just a matter of time. Seems like the rain is catching up with me. Let's hope I can get to my place before any serious downpour occurs. I ordered the new light, the headlight, because this one doesn't seem to be working too much anymore. And uh, a couple other things. I did some shopping today and yesterday. Yeah, I was watching Line Lebron. 
He says it can't be categorized, but you can do a general categorization on people sometimes. And that he is definitely an intellectual. He is never wrong. And you always have to listen to him, because he knows. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you this, and let me tell you that. I know because, and of course, he rides other people for the exact same thing. <laughs> you know, other people do it. They're, well, they're jujules. They're, you know, they're idiots. They're morons. And he pelts them with, uh, uh, well, attacks, verbal attacks. It doesn't attack them physically, but verbally, anyways. And this is way of, it's his way of doing uh, the Alex Jones thing. Alex Jones was a, a, of, of a similar type. And of course, people like that. It's kind of entertaining, I guess. But if you're there to do some, actually, some serious work, to sort of listen to him as uh, something serious, then, well, not so much. As I said, his main point is that he knows a lot of people. He's well-connected. And so, he becomes a litmus test for what's going on in the upper echelons, uh, you know, the higher bits of society. Uh, to sort of see what, you know, you want to know what the elites are thinking? Listen to this guy. You, you, you give an idea of what the elites are kind of thinking. Because they think that they are the, they are the deep state. But the elites are not the deep state. The deep state basically are, is the bureaucracy. The bureaucrats are the deep state. And it's been like that since time immemorial. But very few people understand this. They, they typically identify a particular group as being deep state or so on and so forth. But the reality is it's always bureaucrats, the middlemen. And the thing is, Jews get it. They got everyone talks about the Jews. Uh, everyone talks about the Jews. The reason why the Jews get it is because they were always they were always the middlemen. The Jews are still the middle middlemen. So what happens? They they're the ones who are most visible and able to be identified. And. So they got hit more often than not with the, these labels of, you know, causing all these atrocities. It's not that, that there weren't Jewish people involved in atrocities, uh, in, in, in horrors against humanity, if you will. Uh, it's just that it wasn't necessarily coordinated from the Jewish perspective. Now, were there Jew groups of Jews who were involved in these things? Yes. Were all Jews involved? No. But the thing you can say the same thing about the Italians. You can say the same thing. You can say the same thing about the French, the Germans. Uh, <laughs> you name it. And a large chunk of the people who went around who what, who did these things did so with the help of basically the rank and file bureaucracy because no, none of these people once they had their jobs wanted to lose their jobs the better the, the better you had um, the better you had um, in terms of what you got in terms of your benefits and so on and so forth the more you wanted to keep it. I mean if you got a boat well, who wants to lose your boat you and I have a nice house, who wants to lose the house? So this becomes the, the impetus or the reason or the sort of called the inducement to do horrors because, well, I don't want to lose my job. And this is where it comes down the line and says, well, 
It's not affecting me yet, so I'll do nothing. In other words, we act when things affect us. We act almost entirely. Out of self-interest. We do things for our own particular reason, for our own particular sort of design, pleasure, what have you. This is our motivation. And when this motivation, with this type of motivation being common to the average person, this is how you get horrors uh, like you had with Auschwitz. This is how you have the good people of Germany turning people in. Just now you have, now you have people turning other people in for, for, for hugging in a parking lot. Oh, there are people hugging in the parking lot. Call the cops. And these are these people who call themselves woke and everything like that. Well, sorry, they're not the first people on the block. History, not official history, like you get in textbooks, is really amazing. Because it tell if you put together the right information, it can tell you it can tell you why something was done. It's not a matter that something was done and when it was done, but why was it done? Why did this event in history occur? What were the particular reasons? Once you know why something happens, you can now work on prevention. And of course, because no one cared to look at the why something's happened, uh, you have it repeating itself all over again. This is why we're back in the eugenics program. Different reasons, same results. Now we're back in the eugenics program because we're saving humanity. We're saving the Earth. Ironically enough, this whole concept of saving the Earth isn't new. This is what... cooler out now than uh, when I came. The rain that was supposed to come was brief and it's fine on the way back. So it's still May 10th, but it's close to 10, 30, 11. I didn't do an exact check, so it's uh, about 22, out, 22 hours and 30 minutes into the 10th day. Uh, Penroth riding back once again. This is our standard. This will be my commute for a while. Probably till uh, late November when uh, it gets too cold and too snowy to uh, ride. And then uh, that'll be it for the ride vlog until uh, April, May. So a short riding season. Well, good, uh, long enough anyways. I, I, I find long enough.
guess. The guy doesn't. Oh, it's on the cell phone. Well, I've got a new headlight on order, so that uh, it won't be too long while I'm riding, until I'm riding with a headlight again. Why it's not working, I don't know. Uh, I will certainly have to sort of figure that out when I come get back to my office if it's not working. Anyways, uh, our discussion tonight is basically about surrounding TV. And again, once again, the thoughts that go through your mind as you're watching TV. Uh, I particularly prefer, prefer cartoons, but my parents like uh, uh, more like cop shows and stuff like that, and stuff them with a little bit of excitement. The problem is, my life is filled with excitement on a daily basis. Is the bus going slowly? And so what happens when you when you're watching the cop shows? Thoughts of what you're doing goes through your mind when you're back at work again. So to speak. And I know that with the sound, with, with the wind like this, I have to speak much louder because it's hard to hear me over the wind. So that's what I'm doing. You can hear on the uh, sound whenever I go over a very hard bump. When the bump is very difficult, very hard, you hear it as a snap, as a snap in the audio. So in other words, it makes an audio presence. Along with the noise of the engine. This is how the GoPro prints up all the stuff. You know, the vibra the mechanical vibrations through the, uh, through the bike. Well, uh, you've got it like that. Anyways, Most comp shows try to be realistic, but they do they make mistakes that are somewhat is somewhat unrealistic. And a lot of times is the approach to a particular problem that, that, that forms the error. How you how you approach a particular situation will often determine its outcome in terms of your own perspective, but even, even in generally speaking. So, one thing has to, that sort of popped up tonight, that I was sort of popped into my mind, is that although things aren't moving necessarily as quickly as I would like them to move, sometimes I began to realize that things are moving appropriately. In other words, things can't always go quickly. That there is, in many cases, weeks and months that have to be sort of be waited patiently before you're ready to move, or you are ready to take the next move into the next position. And this is something that's, in many cases, difficult to understand because The mind wants to move forward as quickly as possible. And this is the problem for the data scientists who won't wait and do any form of observation 
and find that the mathematical solution is the quickest solution as compared as when compared to uh, observational data. And this is this is this is something that's, that 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 comes with time and experience. Now, when I came, I was having a discussion with you guys. A part of it wasn't reported because the battery had died. And I didn't realize the battery was dead. So, these discussions will come up again. Some of the stuff will be repeated. And because the vlogs are the notes, these topics and ideas, the, the discussions, will occur as the notes spread out into their own particular um, discrete orbits, if you will. But once again, the approach again is through notes. Because even, even though a note, let's just say a notebook, starts off with one particular subject, as ideas grow and expand, the subjects that are, have become sufficient in size get a notebook of their own. In other words, they get a blog of their own. That's because there's enough material there that warrants a second or third or fourth notebook. These are the blogs. The blogs are determined by the size of the notebook. And when a subject has become mature enough, it moves off into its own notebook. Even though there are still discussions within this notebook, or the current notebook, or whatever, no or whatever notebook I'm in. Particularly if the notebook is general, like our life as Cyborg Alpha. This is the road walk uh, to uh, our life as Cyborg Alpha. But Cyborg Alpha will have content that overlaps in here because it is also general. It is a primary notebook. And it's because there's enough materials. That warrants a second notebook. And I say, Nosey's is going to move up into its own notebook too. And same thing with QLARC. Right here in 10 minutes. It's been 10 minutes since I'm writing, so I've been going pretty fast. Uh. Oh. The streets are very quiet tonight. The authorities, the warden of on prison Ontario, seems to be from the news perspective clamping down even harder on its citizens for being bad people and not adhering the stay-at-home order. It's not, not heating the stay-at-home order. I realize I make mistakes as I speak, and it's hard to go back and correct them. How you do things is often up to you. The protocols, the, the uh, behavior is in some ways up to you. But some, well, see, some behavior is automatic and you don't really necessarily know. In other words, you have habitual behavior that in many cases you're not even aware of. But I think it's a good observer looks past that. Sometimes the habitual behavior is not what you're after. Although you do certainly have, you do certainly have to take note of it. 
take note of a habitual, habitual behavior because sometimes it may come in handy in terms of information on how to reach it. Let's say you have a situation you need to resolve. Well, a person's habitual behavior may be key to resolving a particular issue. And if you didn't heed the information, you didn't take note of it. In other words, uh, take heed of a warning. Uh, then that could be the flaw that, that sort of uh, wrecks the end result. You know, why didn't this work out? Well, because maybe you missed something.